brought you by. What's up, guys? It's John. Can Speak Easy Podcast. We're doing something fun today, guys. Welcome to our special episode. Yeah, yeah. we are making old fashions. Yes. This is a how to on to make the perfect old fashion. The perfect. Did you hear that, people? The perfect. Perfect old And fashion. Ken makes them perfect. Trust me, I've had them. He has had them, yes. But first, we want to start with some interesting facts. Some, uh, or facts or not facts. I don't know. We look at them as facts. We're going to give you a background. How about that? Give us a little history on the old fashioned. A little history on the old fashioned. Ha- old fashioned. Fashioned. Past not tense. Old fashioned. No. It's old fashioned. Although some people call it an old fashioned, it's technically old fashioned. Past tense. Yes. Did you know that Old Fashions may have been the first known cocktail? Which is pretty interesting. Very. You know? Which makes sense. They're old. Correct. You know? So, kind of makes sense. And, and people have been drinking uh, cocktails for a long time. A very, get it, but a very, very long time. And did you know that sometimes, let me ask you this. When you think old fashioned, do you do, would, would you typically do bourbon or would you do rye on that? What, 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 what would John do? Uh, me personally, I, I do, I do, I do rye. You I do, do rye. rye. That's I what do I do. I do rye. I'm, I, I'm a do rye kind of guy. Yeah. And, um, but which has been debated. It's been debated and people are like, oh no, I drink bourbon in my old fashioned, whatever. Um, but honestly, when old fashions were came about, um, rye was the big thing. This was back in the nineteenth yeah. century. It was the big thing. Eighteen hundreds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I've even heard that uh, it might not have been whiskey or rye or bourbon. You could have used gin. I know. Or any, I know. Anything available, I guess, at that time. I was going to bring that up, but you did. So yeah. we we can admit to that because we're bourbon guys and we love old fashions. So that's something we may not want to admit to, um, but we're going to. We're going to. Uh, but yes, it was the late. Um, 19th century, I would say 1860 on is basically the the latest re- or earliest recorded history of old fashions. Um, the the drink was likely referred to even as the old fashioned because it emulated earlier days when people infused their spirits with bittering herbs for digestive purposes. Yeah, it was more m- uh, medicine. It was. It, it was, was medicinal. Yeah, it was more medicinal. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, you know. That makes it interesting, too, because people tried to do things for health reasons. They had indigestion or whatever kind of issues they had, and they said, we want to have our alcohol, too. (laughs) Eventually, bitters became mass-produced, and they started making it with the alcohol and all that fun stuff in it as well. They put all the herbs and the medicinal stuff into bitters, and and that's what you got now. That's what we got, and we use our Angostura bitters. Uh, am I saying that right? I yeah. don't know. I mean, it almost goes back to when a a baby has a toothache. You you rub a little whiskey on there. A little whiskey on there. I've been doing it. Medicinal. And I, I must have toothaches every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I rub whiskey on his gum. And uh, another interesting thing, water and sometimes soda were used as a method to dissolve the sugar. Soda as in like seltzer water, not like Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Yes, 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 yes. We're not going into Coke. We're not going into that stuff. Yeah, it's not that kind of party. Um, <laughs> uh, simple syrup is is sometimes used to avoid the gritty finish and provide more consistency. I've done both. That's more current, though. Yeah, simple th- syrup is more current to cut down the the, uh, the timing and the technique on making it. Yes, I've done both. Okay. Um, I find that lately I'm being an old grandpa, and I'm kind of like I want the old sugar cube. I, I that's what I want to do. One to lump make. or two. Two lumps, One, please. Two. <laughs> The earliest recipes call for lemon peel. Because when you get old fashioned nowadays, what is it? It's always orange peel. It's an always you orange peel. You never see a lemon peel. Yes. Um, which could have been because of what was cost effective back then. What was available. Yeah, what was yeah. available. I think they had the available. The, apparently, they, were, they had all the citruses available, but you know, maybe oranges were a little ch- more expensive and lemons a little cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, but today, we're going to use an orange peel. Um, no matter your choice, the peel is used to brighten the aromas of the cocktail. That's what the point of it is. Yes. Um, and one point that I've read uh, looking up on the history of old fashions is you don't want to muddle your orange peel because no. it brings out the oils that are in the peel. Yes. And it kind of takes away from what your end game is supposed well, to be. Well, the old fashion was created to showcase the flavor. Yeah. That's what it was showcased to do. The muddled fruit is never preferred for a true old fashion. Correct. Where cherries came from, we don't know. 
We don't know. Somebody threw it in there one well, day. Well, when you use like a maraschino cherry, is it, we, we can maybe, you might cover this eventually. I don't know if we'll do it eventually. Maybe we'll do a new old fashioned, which okay. is a little bit different. A new school? Yeah, the new school or whatever it is, which you'll have your cherry, you have all that stuff. But we're going OG on this one, guys. Yeah. We're going OG. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. Um, anything else, you know, that you know? Yeah, I mean, as with uh, all history, and uh, especially whiskey, right? And nobody ever knows the true, true, true facts. But uh, with competing stories, some say that the uh, Old Fashioned actually originated in Louisville, Kentucky, which is the home of bourbon, it right? Is. It is. Uh, in around 1880, a private social club called the Pendennis Club. Pendennis. The- the recipe is linked to the bartender and bourbon distiller of James E. Pepper. We know James E. Pepper yeah. from the bourbon world, right? Yeah, we do. I have a... You have some stuff over there. This is the James E. Pepper decanter, so we know it. James E. Pepper. Yeah. So rumors link Pepper to the Pendennis Club in a in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. And before he uh, he allegedly brought the cocktail to the Waldorf Historia Hotel in New York City. So New York City and Kentucky kind of have this thing where it's like we made it first. No, we yeah. made it first. We did yeah. it first. We did it first. Well, that just goes to Bourbon too. Bourbon Street in uh, in New Orleans. You know that's right. what they say. They, right. You know, there's always that thing. Who created Bourbon? Was it Elijah Craig? Was it this? Or that? you know, there's always going to be something. But guess who's going to win? It's going to be Louisville, Kentucky, because they are the home home of uh, Kentucky bourbon, and now uh, in 2015, Louisville declared the Old Fashioned as the official state cocktail. Well, that makes it official, I guess. Yeah. No? I don't know. Maybe? I don't know. What do you think? Let's go. Let's do this. Let's, Let's give it a shot. So. so if you want to make an old school, old fashioned, follow what we have here. What do yeah. we got? Well, me and John, are, we prefer our rye. And the difference between doing a rye old fashioned, a bourbon old fashioned, rye, you get a little more of that spice. Bourbon, it's going to be a little sweeter. you got that corn, so it's going to be a little bit different as far as taste goes, but not too far off. When you're adding your orange, your sugar, your bitters, everything, uh, that you're going to get more hints of that and everything. Granted, you're showcasing that bourbon or rye, um, but in this case, me and John, we prefer the rye. And we, yeah. we, we're, we're, we're thinking that the OG really is the rye, kind of just going off history and all yeah. that stuff. So this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to start off with our sugar cube. You don't see a lot of these anymore. Look at that. Yes. One lump. <laughs> uh, one lump, please. All right. So we got ours there. Why is it brown? Why is it so uh, This is like that sugar in a raw it's, stuff. It, it really is from 1860. <laughs> it, changed, it changed to brown <laughs> over the years. Yeah. So we have our sugar. So it's not necessarily called for, nor is muddling is, is necessarily called for, but... We're going to add a little water to this. I'm going to say about a teaspoon of water. I got my little dropper here. Let me get a little bit more in there. And we're going to add that right on top of our sugar cube. Yeah. And if you do do the sugar cube and you do add the water, you, you do have to muddle a little bit because you want to dissolve that sugar Yeah, cube. you, you kind of, yes. Cube Just a little. Room. I'm, I'm going to do a wee bit more on each one and call it a day. Uh, yeah, we want to get that. It's not necessarily for the dilution of, you know, where you want to water it down at all. That What I did right there is not watering it down. No. You're just trying to break it's down that sugar a little water, bit. Yeah. Just so you can crush it up. Uh, we're going to do a couple little squirts or dash, whatever you want to call it, of our Angostura bitters. Uh, right here, you can get it at any liquor store. If they don't have it, stop going to that liquor store. <laughs> yeah. So we got one. And we got two. That's, that's more like three, but yeah, one and two. And you know, using the sugar cubes uh, in in a cocktail like this, it's almost like using salt on your food. You're flavoring it, like you yeah. are. You're bringing out the true flavors of what's yes. going in there. Yes, it's like adding salt to a steak. You're not yes, taking exactly. over a steak with salt, but you're bringing out that flavor, bringing out the flavor. of that steak. Yes. You know, I'm using a muddler right here, people. You don't have to use a muddler. New school muddler. Yes, you can use a spoon to break it up, but I don't feel like doing that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Just beat, 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 beat it up, stuff. Baby. Yeah. Beat it up. Uh, typically, it typically, when you're doing this, people, you do want to wait a couple minutes Hope, hoping it will dissolve a little bit more. Uh, yeah. But we don't have all the time in the world for this. So I've been to a bar where they've used a, uh, a sugar packet and some water and dissolved it that way. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you, 
Don't do it that way. Yeah. Uh, go with the sugar cube. If you don't have a sugar cube available, just make some simple syrup. It's yeah. so easy to do. Simple syrup is what? What is a little it? bit of warm water and a little bit of sugar. Yeah, w- water sugar is a 50 50? I forget, 50. but yeah, 50. something about that. Yeah, as far as a simple syrup, you boil it, you let it cool, you got yourself a simple syrup. You can use it for more than just your old yes. fashioned. Just like it says, simple. But be careful with it though. You don't want to put too much yeah. simple syrup. You don't want to make it too sweet and take away from the actual taste. Of yes, it. exactly. The main event. So right now we have our sugar, we have our bitters in there. Uh, next, we want to do our ice. Cubes, and it's always a nice big square ice cube. Is always the ideal ice cube. It's ideal. It could be a round cube. I mean, yeah, that's acceptable. But a big nice, yes, square cube is. I mean, if you wanted to do something like crushed ice or something like that, that's more like your mint julep. Um, you know what that does? Honestly, the crushed ice just waters it down a little. Yeah, bit. you know, the cube ice stands out a little bit more. Yeah. holds up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So right now, let me just shift a couple things over. This is what we're looking at right here, guys. And um, the next thing is our bourbon. Let's add this bourbon. Oh, I got a fresh bottle here. We're using Sazerac rye today, guys. This is a Buffalo Trace product. I love Sazerac rye for old fashions. This is my go-to for old fashions. John, you too as well? Same. All right. And we're going to do a two and a half ounce, two and a half. So this is one of those European ones. And this is like 30 milliliters. This is like 60. It basically equates to uh, one ounce and two ounces of a little extra. Uh, Who's going to complain? You know what I mean? Uh, So we're going to do two and a half ounces. So we're going to start with our two ounce. Now, why he's pouring that, if you're going to a, a bar or a club, I mean, you, you can do you can use bullet rye. You can use, if you don't want to use rye at all, sometimes I, I go Woodford or I go Buffalo Trace. Yeah. Uh, I prefer Buffalo rye. Trace is great for old fashioned. Absolutely. But Sazerac good. rye to me is uh, yeah. old school and as good as it gets. And then we're going to do half of that one here. And sorry, John, I went a little heavy handed on that one. That's okay. All right. Two and three quarters ounces. <laughs> And uh, that's all right. I, I return the favor to mine as well. Perfect. All yeah, right. So we have our rye in there. Now, as and if you notice, if you notice as well, it's not going to a mixer glass. You're not pouring everything in and shaking it up and pouring it in. Everything goes right into the glass we're going to be drinking. In. Yes, 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 yes. And what we want to do, you want to get that spoon at the that edge of the glass. Copper spoon fork thing. Edge of the glass. You want to mix this. We're stirring, not shaking. Here. All right, we're gonna do it to this one as well. Right out the edge of the glass, you're gonna keep spinning that. You're gonna keep spinning that. Incorporate that, that gonna... sugar, those bitters. That oh bourbon. yeah, we're mixing that together. We're getting that looking pretty. It's gonna look good. It's gonna taste delicious. And as that ice dilutes a little bit while you're spinning it, yeah. it, it, it flows in with the bourbon. Yes. The, the, the salt. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the sugar. And the salt. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna do our orange peel right now. I got my peeler. I'm gonna go down in there. We got one. Look at you. We've got two. Perfect. And what I want to do, I want to give a little squeeze in there. Oh, see all that squirting out? Isn't that crazy, bro? How about rub the glass a little bit? Oh, Oh. yeah. We're going to give a little hug there. I'm going to drop that in there for you, Johnny. Twisty, twisty. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. Do you wash your hands? Shoot, I'm not sure, man. Jeez. And we're going to, oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. That's what we're talking about right there. And we have our old fashions right there. How easy is that? And the smell coming over here just from that itself. And the interesting thing, the orange is more for just a- accenting that taste. Not necessarily the aroma. It, it, I mean, your nose, your mouth, everything is kind of like commingled. Well, there. Every, everything is smell, right? Before yeah. nose. So yeah. you get that citrus, that orange peel yeah. smell, along with the taste in the old fashioned. Yeah. It just brings it out. Well, you, have you ever had a cold before? If you have a cold and you're like, I can't taste anything. Um, that's the great thing about your nose is because it, it's you have it. You smell that orange peel. I smell my fingers right now, by the way. You smell that orange peel, and you're getting that, and you're just getting it, and, and then you, you drink it, and you have that that that, that delicious, slightly citrus taste. Yes. Like, once again, if you want to use a lemon peel, I'm sure it'll be delicious. Uh, we're going, I don't think in the last, whatever, 50 years, people have really been using lemon peel, so we're kind of going this route with it. I think a citrus peel is the best way to put it. I don't think it's a bad option. Lemon, orange but we, we, we personally like orange, I think, you know? 100%. If you start going to newer old fashions, you might use orange bitters, which I typically like to use. I don't use the cherries myself. 
but I will use maybe a dash of orange bitters onto it too as well, and it gives it a nice flavor. Uh, but we're going old school. We're going traditional on this. That's what this podcast episode is, is traditional old fashioned. John, here you go, buddy. Thank you, sir. I'm getting that oh. citrus right away, man. It's nice. That's what I love that on the nose, man. You get that on the nose. And when you're drinking it and you smell that orange on the nose, I'm sure it's going to be delightful. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. All Thank right. you, sir. Oh, my God. That fresh sugar cube, the bitters, the orange peel, the rye. <sighs> I'll tell you, it doesn't get better than this. It, this, this is... is this is the perfect cocktail right here. Yeah, this is really it good. It really is. I, I'm, I'm going to say, usually when I make these, I'm very sloppy. I'm very like, all right, I'll toss it together. So I don't even use this fancy stuff right here. Um, and because we're doing this here, I was like, let me do it right. Let me do it right for everyone that's watching us right now. And this is, it, it definitely is worth it to do it right. And I'll tell you, I've bought the old-fashioned mix in a bottle, and I mixed it with my bourbon, so mm -hmm. I didn't have to do all this. Honestly, this took almost as fast as just opening yeah. up the bottle and pouring it's it in. It's not that bad. That was simple. That was easy. Yeah. This is the way to go. This Man. is the way to do it. Awesome stuff. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our page. Uh, comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you did what we did and made an old-fashioned and yeah. if it came out good for you. And let us know what kind of bourbon you use. Do you like using the rye? Do you use Sazerac? Do you use a regular bourbon? Yeah. What do you use? Yeah. Do you, yeah. Whatever type of whiskey you use, whatever you like, it's what you like. Stick to it, but don't be afraid to try different things. No, it's, a, it's a never. A you bad can't thing. go wrong. Yeah, you can't, you can't go, wrong. go wrong. John, cheers. Cheers, brother. Thank you so much. Cheers to you. Cheers. Please. <laughs>